Assalamu alaikum dear researchers and welcome to this lecture series on the second part of PLS SEM with Smart PLS 4. In this video we are going to discuss the interface of the Smart PLS 4 software about importing data and overview the data that we are importing, creating a new path model and what are the systematic steps when we are applying in a PLS SEM project. In the previous video we discussed something about relationships in research, what are IVs, DVs, mediators, moderators and we can establish complex relationship and test those complex relationship in SEM as a second generation technique which is more preferred over the first generation technique nowadays. Concept of measurement like how we cannot use categorical data or categorical variables for our IV, DVs or mediators and we need to have some metric data and how we can convert an interval uh, a Likert scale or a Likert type scale into interval because of some symmetry and uh, the continuity. What are latent variables or unobserved variable and what how they are different from observed variables or indicators and what is the concept of structural and measurement model in SEM. So this is smart PLS interface in front of you. As you can see if we install this, uh, this left hand side will be empty. This is the workspace, right? On the top, you can see the options of analysis that Smart PLS 4 provides. In Smart PLS 3, there was only PLS SEM, but in 4, uh, as the updates have come, this is regression process that is also available. And in the latest update, the uh, software has provided option to perform CB SEM analysis. Right, so we can do a PLS SEM regression process and CB SEM in Smart PLS 4, the latest version. So, if uh, you will be asked to create a workspace like a folder where you can uh, save all your uh, updates, will be saved right for every project. So, you can uh, create that folder over here, create a new folder. Uh, I have already created folder here, and uh, uh, you can create a new project. Right, give it a name. I've already created a project named YouTube demo. And next is to import data files. So when you click this button, you will be led to the last uh, selected folder. So this is the data that I'm going to upload. As you can see, Smart PLS 4 provides this option to upload data, which can be CSV file, which can be an SAV file, the file that you are working on SPSS and you have saved that. And it can be an Excel file and even you can uh, download a text file, uh, up, upload the text file, right? So here I have this data which is in SPSS format. Let me show you that data again, right? This this is this is uh, my data that was actually collected through survey, and uh, we have to clean up, we have to do screening of the data before we uh, input into Smart PLS. First of all, it's important that all the data should be in the form of uh, a numeric data right uh, and secondly uh, the data all the screening process like uh, outliers the missing values unengaged responses all those analysis should be done prior to importing into smart pls even if you have a negative coded uh, question you should reverse code it in either sps or excel before importing the data uh, into uh, smart PLS. Put the data file you can see that smart PLS has already identified that uh, this marital status is binary, gender is binary and for the rest of the variable even if they are ordinal or even if they are categorical smart PLS has mostly preferred to make the metric. I think this is because uh, it mostly works on metric data so it has assumed that this is a metric uh, variables and we can actually select if we want for example for me, the degree is ordinal here. The tenure of say is okay. Age is basically metric and religiosity. I think it's again a uh, categorical variable over here. So we can change these settings. Uh, missing values, smart PLS can uh, handle the missing values. If you want to apply a marker for the missing values, you can do that over here. And we have one for 121 cases and 44 indicators. So let's press the import button and import the data. So as we have imported the data, you can see the indicators and overlook over here. There is the minimum, maximum, standard deviation, all these descriptives. 
We're not going to actually use the descriptive in our research papers or research thesis. We are going to do that on some other software in descriptive uh, stats, right? And but here we can have an overlook over correlation between indicators. You can see which indicators, and this is really helpful if we are doing segment uh, analysis or latent class analysis later on. And here we can look at the raw data, and we can also look at the missing values. And you can see these missing values are basically. Uh, in demographic because I have already treated the missing values for the indicators uh, of the data. So on the left hand side you can see that this is the project name YouTube demo and uh, we have created a model over here. We have to create a model. This is the data that is imported. So if I press the create model button, right, so what model type? Obviously we are going to discuss PLS SEM first and then the model name model one FOT to distress so I'm going to start with a simple model so first of all let's start with uh, our IV that we discussed these are the four indicators for the IV you just press the shift button and click all of them and you can drag and drop on this workspace okay what name Okay, I will give it fear of terrorism or I can even use the name because unlike SPSS we can use spaces over here like fear of terrorism. I think mostly smart peers expect that we uh, drag and drop the DV first because on the right hand side it uh, moves all the indicators but we can always change the position of the indicators using these buttons over here. So this is my IV. Okay, and uh, what about my TV? This psychological distress, these eight questions, I'm going to press with the shift button. I'm going to drag and drop psychological distress. You could give any name. This is just the labeling. So this is psychological distress. You can change, you know, you can adjust the position. And you will see that this is a marker that allows you to adjust position relative to the other uh, indicator. So why these are red and why these are yellow? These yellow ones are actually indicators and this red are actually the latent constructs. And they will be red until unless this model is complete. How we are going to complete the model? Basically we are going to connect this IV with the TV. So this is how you make a simple path model in smart PLS dragging the indicators from the left hand side and making uh, uh, the connection between IVs and DVs. Let's complicate this model a little bit and add some more IVs in it. So if we have to move a latent variable or anything on this screen, we have to use the select button. We can move it over here. So let, let's add two more constructs as IVs. First of all, I'm going to select negative effect. Since there is no pattern in the name of the indicators, it has suggested the name alpha. I'm going to write negative effect as the name of the construct. It is dead because there is no connection yet. So I'm going to align the indicators to left. Then add positive effect. Again, the name is alpha because there's no pattern. So positive effect. You can always zoom out to make more space, zoom in, whatever suits you. And let's now make the connections. So from IV to DV, from IV to DV. Since these all the reflective constructs, then I will explain the formative constructs when I will be explaining the higher order constructs in later videos. Uh, for now, we are working on the reflective constructs and that's more prevalent type of uh, variables uh, in social sciences, right? So if I need to move these constructs, I have to use the select button. Now let's see what are the steps that are recommended when we are carrying out our research using PLS SEM. Stage one is when you uh, formulate your theoretical framework or your hypothesis. This is a structural model. As in our example, we have three IVs and one DVs. Obviously, this should be based upon some uh, logic and information uh, from the literature or based upon some existing theory and model. At stage two, you specify the measurement model. 
like this is the questionnaire to measure uh, the fear of terrorism right these four questions and or any other way uh, the main point is that whatever we do our data should be uh, in quantitative form and preferably metric form if we are for uh, collecting data for our ivs mediators or dvs and as well as moderators now stage 3 is about collecting the data then examining the data obviously the data should be uh, in the form of some spreadsheet or in csv file in excel file in sav file and we have done all the prior screening of the data for the missing values for uh, unengaged responses for uh, extreme values all those examination should be done before importing into as uh, pls stage 4 is that pls path model estimation where we actually run the algorithm and then these results are used to assess the measurement model the reflective measurement model and the formative measurement model the formative measurement model i will explain later on when we uh, explain the higher order constructs or i will for uh, demonstrate that uh, later on and in stage 6 uh, we have uh, we assess the structural model there are certain steps that we are going to see and then advanced pls scm analysis and if we need to write it in a thesis or in a research paper how to interpret results and draw conclusions